Hi everyone, today I am going to introduce my DIY smart multipurpose battery tester. This project is an upgrade to my earlier battery capacity tester project. It includes an integrated charging circuit, so there is no need of an external charger before the testing. It has four different mode of operations like charging, discharging, analyzing, and IR test. This video is sponsored by Ultium. Altium 365 has introduced a fantastic integration with Silicon Expert. Now you can access all the component data directly from the Silicon Expert within your design environment. Here is a quick demo. In Altium 365, go to the panel and select manufacturer part search. Search for any component you need for your project. Then click on get data from Silicon Expert and you will see all the important parameters of the component in one place. Guys, if you are a student in India, I have a great news for you. Altium recently launched Altium Student Lab. Sign up with your email ID and institution name and you will get access to Altium 365, online courses and even a certificate to enhance your electronics design career. Now let's move to the project. I ordered the PCB with stencil from PCB Way. Let's take a closer look. You can see the PCB quality is extremely good and flawless and the stencil is precisely cut. Now we can move to PCB assembling. Place the PCB on a flat surface. Then surround the PCB with 4 additional PCB to help and secure the main PCB in place. Carefully align the stencil on the PCB. Then secure the edges of the stencil with masking tape. I am using mechanic solder paste for this project. It has a low melting point of 183 degrees centigrade. First, I took small amount of solder paste with the help of a ice cream stick and spread it evenly over the stencil using a credit card. It is important to ensure that the solder paste fills all the pads perfectly. Next, I will place all the SMD components on the PCB. To make this process easier, I have arranged all the parts in advance. You can get BOM file from PCB way or Instructable. The link is given in the video description. Now I will carefully place each component in its place by using a tweezer. I will suggest to take a printout of the schematic during this process. You can download the schematic from the link given in the video description. A big thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring this project. They offer high quality PCB manufacturing starting at just $5 for 10 pieces. Beyond PCB, they provide services like PCB assembly, CNC machining, and 3D printing. For more details, you can check out the link given in the description. Now let's move to the project. The components are already in the place. I will use my mini hot plate MHP50 to solder them. As the plate heats up, you will see the solder paste melt and components stick perfectly to their pads. The process is really satisfying to watch. Now the SMD component are soldered. It is time for the throw hole parts. I will start with the slide switch. Next I will solder the buzzer. Unfortunately the buzzer that I have in my stock has wrong footprint. So I have to bend the leg slightly to fit into the PCB holes. Now I will prepare the MOSFET. First I applied a thermal paste to the MOSFET and attached the heatsink to ensure proper cooling during its operation. After soldering the MOSFET, I trimmed the extra leg by using a nipper. Next, I will solder the female header pin to install the OLED display. If you don't want to use 3D printed enclosure, then I will recommend to use PCB standoff. Here I have used M3 standoff with nylon screws. These standoffs are useful because it will provide space between the PCB and surface and also allows airflow to cool the PCB easily. Now the PCB assembly is complete, we can move to test the device. Before testing, first we have to upload the program to the CIO ESP32. Now insert the battery to be tested. Be sure the polarity is correct. 
Now I will power up the device by using a USB cable. Slide the power switch to its on position. Now you will notice that the OLED display shows Open Green Energy logo. The PCB board has three buttons, mod, up and down. By pressing the up button, the cursor will move upward. Similarly, by pressing the down button, the cursor will move downward. By long pressing the mod button, you can select the mod. Now let me walk you through the different mode of operation. In the charge mode, the battery will charge at a fixed charging current 500 mA. The red LED also indicates the battery is charging. You will see all the charging parameter on OLED display. In the discharge mode, the battery will discharge through the MOSFET and shunt register. The energy will dissipated in the form of heat. First, you have to set the battery cutoff voltage and discharge current. The maximum discharge current is 1000 mA. In the analyze mode, the battery will first charge to its full capacity, then it will rest for a few minutes to cool it down, then it will discharge to its cutoff voltage to measure the true capacity. At the end of the process, you will see the true capacity of the battery on OLED display. In the IR test mode, it measures the internal resistance of the battery. For a new and high quality battery, the IR value is approximately in between 15 to 40 million. I designed a 3D printed enclosure for this project in Fusion 360. It has three parts, the top cover, main housing and button caps. You can download the STL files from Instructable. The link is given in the video description. Now I will install the heat insert into the mounting holes by using a soldering iron tip. Now install the PCB into the enclosure by securing the four holes at the corners. Next I will insert the three buttons into the top cover and press it onto the main housing. It is a press and fit design so no additional screws are required. Now the assembly process is complete and the device is ready for testing. I will demonstrate all the features of this device as I have explained it earlier. If there is no battery in the battery slot, in all the mode of operation it will show empty battery slot. If you insert a battery with very low voltage, then it will show damaged battery. The onboard battery holder is only suitable for 18650 battery. For testing the other sizes of battery, you can use the JST connector. Guys, if you find this project interesting, don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment below. Thank you, have a nice day.